Hey guys, it's Dr. Brian Mole, the diabetes coach, certified diabetes educator, and IFM certified functional medicine practitioner. And I'm back today with another video blog. Today we're going to be talking about something very important, and that is addressing and reversing insulin resistance. Insulin resistance is not only at the root cause of type 2 diabetes, but it's also a major contributing factor to coronary heart disease, stroke, obesity, and even Alzheimer's disease and dementia. So insulin resistance is extremely important to look at, and the key is that it can be changed, it can be improved, and it can be reversed. So we're gonna talk about seven key strategies today to reverse insulin resistance. Number one is to lose the VAT. That's not fat, but VAT. What is VAT? VAT is visceral adiposity tissue. That's the deep fat underneath the muscle. Subcutaneous fat is the loose fat that we see on the surface right underneath the skin, but underneath the muscle, packed in around the organs like the liver and pancreas is that deep visceral fat, which is known as angry fat. It's inflammatory fat. It's fat that triggers insulin resistance and causes hormone imbalances. That's the bad stuff that really can cause a lot of problems and has been implicated in insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes. So we want to cut the VAT. Unfortunately, there's no way to target that particular fat, so we've got to lose weight overall. Now, being heavy or obese or overweight is not the cause, the sole cause of type 2 diabetes, but it is a contributing factor, and if you have extra weight, we've got to try to get that off, especially that deep visceral fat. Number two is to cut the carbs. If we want to reduce insulin resistance, we've got to reduce blood insulin levels. How do we do that? By eliminating things like particular foods that trigger the release of insulin. The number one thing, the number one food to do that is carbohydrates, particularly starchy, processed carbohydrates and sugar-laden carbohydrates. So we want to cut those out or drastically reduce those from our diet and focus more on fibrous carbs like broccoli, cauliflower, and greens, as well as proteins and healthy fats. The next factor is to empty the bucket. Empty the bucket. What is the bucket? The bucket is our body's store of glycogen, which is stored sugar, and that bucket is in the liver and in the muscles. Our liver and our muscles are filled with about 2,000 calories worth of sugar in the form of glycogen, and that's used for quick energy. The problem is if we never use it, if we don't empty the bucket, when we eat more carbohydrate, sugar, or even protein, which gets converted to sugar, it's got nowhere to go, so it just spills over into the bloodstream. So we've got to empty the bucket. How do we do that? Exercise, particularly high intensity, short burst interval training. You've got to deplete the glycogen stores in the muscle and the liver. The only way to do that is through anaerobic exercise, which is exercise where you're huffing and puffing and breathing heavy, high intensity, you're getting close to your maximum heart rate. And you do that for short bursts of time, 30 seconds or a minute. And we've got some special videos of that coming up. Now, I will give a word of caution. If you're new to that type of exercise, make sure you're heart healthy, check with your doctor, and ramp up to that slowly. Now, the next one is one of my favorites, intermittent fasting, or what's known as IF. Intermittent fasting is a strategy that's been used for many years. There's lots of study about how this improves insulin sensitivity. We take an eating window of, say, about six to eight hours, and the rest of the day, we fast. That eating window can be noon to six, noon to seven, noon to eight, and we have our two meals during that eating window, one at noon, one at, say, six o'clock, and then we're done. The rest of the day, we don't eat. What does that do? It allows your insulin levels to gradually drop, and also leptin, which is another important hormone for insulin regulation. As your insulin levels drop, your cells become more insulin sensitive. 
So it's important. Oftentimes we hear eat every two to three hours. That's good for maintaining uh, blood sugar control if it's all over the place or if you have low blood sugar, but it's not good for reversing insulin resistance because we have, every time you eat, every two to three hours, let's say, you're gonna get an insulin surge and that's gonna make you more insulin resistant. We have to let the insulin levels drop, which makes us more sensitive to insulin. The next tool is called improving your sleep. Sleep is essential. There was a study done in the Annals of Internal Medicine back in 2012 that showed just four nights of four and a half hours of sleep led to significant insulin resistance. They measured insulin and found that they released three times as much insulin as the people were getting eight hours of sleep after just four nights. So sleep deprivation is a huge contributor to insulin resistance. Do whatever you need to do to make sure you're getting well rested. And we have some strategies on that also. The next one is fix your gut. You know, the gut is the seed of health and everything seems to come from the gut. The microbiome, the balance of bacteria in your gut has, is associated with inflammation and it's been shown, the wrong bacteria have been shown to lead to insulin resistance. Cleaning up the gut, feeding the right fiber has been shown to reduce blood sugar and improve insulin sensitivity. So make sure your gut is healthy, fix the gut if you need to. And last but not least, we have helpful supplements. Supplements can be uh, one of the keys to improving insulin sensitivity. There's several that I'd like to mention. The first is chromium. There's been many studies done on chromium between 200 and 1,000 micrograms a day showing that it actually increases how insulin works. It increases the um, uh, sensitivity to insulin in the body. Another one is magnesium. Magnesium has about 300 different functions in the body. One of them is potentiating insulin and making insulin work better at the cellular level. Uh, there's vitamin D. Vitamin D deficiency is associated as one of the causes of insulin uh, resistance and less insulin sensitivity. There's polyphenols that are found in foods like uh, cocoa and green tea extract as well as uh, cinnamon, which many of you have heard of. And these polyphenols have been shown to improve insulin sensitivity. And last but not least, lipoic acid. Alpha lipoic acid or R lipoic acid is a powerful antioxidant that it can improve insulin sensitivity and decrease insulin resistance, among other things. So there's some great tools that you can use, some great tips for you today. Hope you enjoyed this video blog. Stay tuned for our next one. Remember to keep climbing and to never give up. This is Dr. Brian Mole, the Diabetes Coach.